Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at MakerBot Labs in Brooklyn, New York with Bree Pettis. It's so good to have you here. Good to see you again. Yeah. Sir. Um, you guys, there's big, been big news over the last couple of weeks. You guys have a brand new printer. Yep. Um, and it's something a little different than what you've done before. Yep. So this is the Replicator 2. This is the MakerBot Replicator 2 desktop 3D printer. That's the official, the official, <laughs> official name. Okay. Um, so it's a lot bigger. It's the first thing I noticed. It yep. looks like it's not a wooden frame anymore. Yep. Well, it's actually the same size as the original Replicator on the outside, but you can make things that are 37% bigger That's on the inside. Exactly 37%? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, the steel frame's new too. Yep. The steel frame, basically, if you were in an ultra humid environment, the wooden frame actually worked really well for the most part, but it, the steel frame adds this like extra rigidity that just lets you get more a higher resolution and more like more ac it's more accurate. And you can go a little bit faster. You can move the yes. print heads and stuff a little you bit faster. You can go faster. faster. Well. It's, it's it's more durable. And it, it seems like maybe it's a little bit quieter than than my old replicator. Oh, it's massively quieter, but it is heavier. Okay. Well, so do you the pros and cons? Yep. Um, you've also changed the printing material for this for yeah. this version. So in the past, we used ABS, which is a very traditional manufacturing material, mm -hmm. same thing LEGO is made out of. With this, we've, we've, we've shifted to this material called PLA. And P PLA is polylactic acid, and it's a, a renewable bioplastic made from corn. Okay. So it smells good when you make stuff with it. What, does it smell like popcorn, or uh, what's the smell? Tell, describe the smell. It's kind of like, you know, when you have waffles and you pour Aunt Jemima, yeah, okay. Corn, corn basically syrup. corn syrup warm all over syrup. it. It's okay. like warm corn syrup. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll take that and go. Um, it's so, sweet. So uh, PLA has some, some other benefits too. I mean, oh, yeah. I, know it, I know it transitions between solid and liquid a little bit, a little bit quicker, um, but, but there's other big benefits to using PLA, I know. It really improves dimensional stability. So because it doesn't expand as much when it heats up, it doesn't contract as much when it cools. So you have less cracking, less warping, less peeling, and it just sticks amazingly well to the build platform so you don't get things getting knocked off. And that, that's why you're not doing a heated build platform on this version of the MakerBot. Yeah, you don't need one. It's, it's, so that also, that heated build platform was, was significant power draw, so we actually shifted from a massive power supply to like a smaller, so we don't have a power giant supply. Xbox size power yeah. supply back there anymore. <laughs> um, and that was also the thing that took a long time, a long time to heat up on, it did. on my MakerBot. It just takes like a minute, a couple minutes, like three minutes or less, to warm this thing up and get it going. Whereas oh. it used to take like maybe ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. It seems seems like a, a pretty big improvement. Uh, the print head's more or less the same from the previous versions, though, right? The print head is basically the same because PLA cools. It has it cools slower. Interestingly. Uh, we added a little fan to the side here that blows over the actual object as you're making it to have it cool down faster. Oh, so so it goes from 200 degrees Celsius to room temperature much faster. Okay. So that so that way, if you're making small things, it doesn't get real. It doesn't stay all goopy. It cools down and becomes much more solid. And you don't have those splits where it breaks and breaks right. in between layers if you have a bad connection. Every, yes, very it's, good. So in terms of like we we just fell in love with PLA, and the problem before was that. You really had to dial it in, and with this, we've been able to get just we've been able to dial it in, and it just works. Like we we literally took the first ten off the line and installed them in our retail store, <laughs> and we had an engineer there just in case anything went wrong. And after like four or five hours, he's like, "Can I go back to work? <laughs> like they're all working fine, and there's no problems." I know you guys have kind of shifted from having a lot of custom build profiles and stuff like that for people who who've used the MakerBot. You know that sometimes you have to adjust things like infill and. You yeah. know, uh, shell density and that kind of stuff. It seems like now there's more of a focus on uh, repeatability. Right. So before it was kind of like having a hot rod. You had to spend your weekends under the hood, you know, tuning things up, tightening up nut slots. Yeah, or, okay. or you know, adjusting the carburetor. Like, and now we've got it. Just we've got it. This is more like we we we, we went from like hot rod to like a Honda type of approach where you just get in, <laughs> you turn the key, and you know it's going to work. 200,000 miles. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other big shift that's happened here is that in addition from being kind of a kit, this is more of a consumer product now. I mean, you guys have a retail store that we went and saw yesterday. It was, it was, there's a lot of cool MakerBot printed stuff in there. Um, what's it been like transitioning from like a hobbyist kind of, I don't want to say hobbyist because that's not fair. You guys have been doing this as a business for a long time now. Right. But like a, a, almost like a garage project into a, a functioning business. Yeah, I mean, our, our core group with, with the wood machines was programmers. <laughs> and 
tinkerers and, and hobbyists. And, and now we've shifted into a machine that people who like have AutoCAD SolidWorks or SketchUp can just put on their desk and just start creating things. They don't have to, it's less about creating the technology, creating the machine and more about what you can make with the machine. Like a lot of our audience are makers and they're people who have, yep. have built things that they think are awesome and they want to figure out how they can, you know, make them into a business that so they can quit their crappy day job or whatever. Let me give some advice to people who are, I would let's, love say, advice. let's say that you have an idea for a consumer product, like you're gonna, let's say you have a phone and you've, you've figured out how to attach like, uh, like a razor, like an electrical razor to it, okay. right? And just as Eminently like... Eminently practical <laughs> device. <laughs> um, and you're like, okay, I've got something. And I think that the, 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 the things that you want to do right away is you want to, um, you want to share as much as possible and see if there's actually people who want to shave while talking on the phone. And... <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how do you go about that? I mean, do you start posting on message boards? Do you build some prototypes and give them to friends and see how exactly. they use them? Exactly. I think that's that's what we did. We built some prototypes. We got them to almost work, and then we were like, people will buy these if we make them. And we actually we totally underestimated how much people wanted them. We made twenty, and we thought that would be enough for months. And instead, it was enough for like two weeks. And or and people like bought them because there wasn't a, a a similarly priced way for them to experiment with three D printing or right. even like. Even like G code kind of CC uh, uh, cam stuff. Yeah, so there was the RepRap project which we had been involved in, which was uh, is a project that's primarily focused on making 3D printers that can make 3D printers. Mm -hmm. But we wanted a 3D printer that just worked. What I wish had been around when we started MakerBot was Kickstarter, because we would have then been instead of going to investors and spending time doing getting seed investment, mm -hmm. we could have just gone to Kickstarter, seen if people liked it, and not given away equity to. To, to get the money we needed to start the business. Well, and you get you get things like the ability to do pre-sale, so you can do right. massive batch purchases of things that are much cheaper at, at volume right. than they are when you buy 50 or 100 of them. I think the other thing that people don't do when they start a company is they don't properly think about the multiplier that they should add to their costs. So okay. bill of materials, you should really, if you're looking, if you want to have distributors, you want to get like a 2.6 multiplier on your bill of materials and, all, and your costs so that you can cover everything else. So you're saying you're, you want your cost, you want the final sale price to whoever you're selling to, whether it's distributors or end users, to be 2.6 times that And cost. that's so that you can have like a 40% margin or 50% margin in your, if you give, your, if you give a distributor 40% margin and you want a 40% margin yourself, if you mm -hmm. want to share the, share the, the glory with the distributor, the 2.6 multiplier is how you get there. Okay. And then, and then, but you could also use things like Shopify and, yep. and kind of, there's a lot of online short storefronts that will do distribution yep. and stuff for you as well. Probably not with something like this because it's a, it's a little bit of a tricky thing to ship. Um, but, but that stuff helps pay, ease the path as well. Right? Yeah. And then you just have to be on email on the phone all the time. Like the first two years I spent like between like two and 10 hours a day, just like helping people get the, their machines working. How, how many cupcake and thingamatic kits did you personally ship out? You know, when we started, uh, let's see, I think cupcakes and thingamatics add up to about 7,500 machines in the wild. Wow. So when you think that like each of those required between zero and 10 hours of customer support, mm -hmm. you can start like pulling your hair out really yeah. quickly. Because it's not like you had a call center in, in, in some place in the Far East answering calls about making no. calls. You guys answered all those emails. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, lots of emails. Like so I don't think I think when you start a business, people aren't prepared to pack and ship. Like mm -hmm. you have to love to pack and ship if you're going to start a business. You have to just want to like figure out how to get the best deal from FedEx and UPS. You have to figure out how you want to get the you know how you want to be most efficient with the box and what you put in the box and how quickly you can put things in the box. I think it's kind of like people who like do like triathlons and then have to switch from like <laughs> swimming to to running or from running the to bike swimming, shoes on. Yeah, yeah. they have to like, as they're like switching from running to swimming, they're like, they're, they're, they're taking their clothes off as they jump, before they oh, jump yeah. in the water. So they don't stop and then spend 10 minutes getting ready for swimming and jump in. Like there's a whole like optimization of the process that you just have to like, you have to love thinking about that. So, so are you one of those guys when you open something new, you kind of figure out how the packaging works and you're like, it's, yeah, it's, like, like, it's like a Ooh, this game. is how they have the shrink wrap. Like look where they have the seams on the <laughs> shrink wrap. That's pretty good. Like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Very good. So um, <laughs> anything else you want to share for, for budding make? I mean, and, and I guess part of it is, is figuring out how much of the, how big the market for your device is. That's right. So, um, and you got to be careful because sometimes your friends will be really enthusiastic about something. It's it's worth trying out, even putting it on Etsy or eBay or something like that, where you can just sell small batches of something. Yes. To kind of see. 
And I think the thing that people need to get over is the fear that their idea is going to be taken by somebody else. Because if it's really, a good, well, first of all, making things is hard, and there's actually a pretty, it's not easy to get in to, to start a business and do it, so you've got some time to figure it out once you, after you have the idea. Mm -hmm. Like, have your idea, get, put, get it out there, see if it gets traction, and then if it does, just dogpile on as much resources as you can. Well, I mean, and you guys have had people that have made direct clones of the, yeah. of the previous version of the replicator, and it's got to be disheartening because you spend a ton of money and a ton of time and a, and a lot of heart figuring out these machines. Um, you said something at XO a few weeks ago that you can either chase down the people who are copying your stuff or you can just move on and make the next best thing. That's right. And I thought that was, I, I, think, that's, I think that's very true. You know, we've got, we've got people like a guy, there's a guy named W.J. Steele who has a cupcake, and he really modified it enough that finally he decided to just remake the whole machine and he's actually got a Kickstarter right now for his Ultrabot. Which, and like, that's a cool, that's, that's cool. He took a cup, the cupcake and evolved it and came out with something new. The, we're like, that, that's innovative, that's exciting, that's, that's adding to the community. Fork, and, don't clone. Yeah, but when, you, when we see like, when we see, when, we, when, when you type a MakerBot into Alibaba and you can get a MakerBot for eight or nine hundred dollars, for, and it says MakerBot, but it's not sold by us. That's right. kind of a problem because one, we spend a bunch of time. We we really care. We do a lot of support for our users, and we can't really afford to support clones that aren't made by us. That are probably made pretty that, like that aren't. That I mean, we're really obsessive They're about. They're not made up these to things. the quality standards. They might not. They might okay. be. We don't know. But we'd rather not. Like it says MakerBot on it. They're violating trademark. Right. And it's just that's not cool. So. Um, so that's one of the challenges as you go forward, is you have to keep innovating and figure out what steps you take to make that work. Okay, so speaking of innovating, what's next on the MakerBot front? So, uh, this is the Replicator 2. Um, it's out now. It's out now, and the next step, we announced it, but we're not shipping it until the new year, is the Replicator 2X, which is, it's actually going to be a ABS, it's for the people, it's for the experimenters. The, two, the X is for experimental. Okay. <clears throat> and the 2X has two extruders and a heated build platform that have, and the heated build platform's been redesigned so it's more efficient. It starts um, up, heats up faster, stays, holds temperature better? Yeah, I hope so. Safe to say. We're working okay. on that. Um, and that'll be, that, so that's a machine for the people who like to live on the edge and like to be like, push the, the technology farther and with dual extrusion and, and, and the heated build platform. If you're just somebody who wants to make something work, this is the machine for you. But for the experimenters, people who live beyond the edge. That machine will come out next year for them. Um, and, and what do you think about advances, other advances in 3D printing technology? I mean, right now you guys use extruded plastic. Do you yep. see that being the foreseeable future for MakerBot? Or are you looking at like stereo, there's some interesting stereo yeah. photography stuff happening now? There's a bunch of that stuff. I mean, for us, what we love about this technology is that <clears throat> when you're done with it, you just pop it out. You don't need to wear gloves. You right. don't need to deal with any toxic chemicals. You, you know, we're comf you, you can feel comfortable having this in a classroom or as a parent or a teacher. The idea is this isn't something toxic that, will, that you have to worry about. And you get, can get in tons of, we, you know, we make it in tons of colors and it's really durable and strong. So you can make mechanical things out of it. The other technologies don't have those advantages. So they're more, and more like architectural models and stuff like that? Architectural models, like actual like looks like prototypes, maybe not works like prototypes. Okay. Um, to be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time with that technology because it just hasn't been available. Well, it's been really expensive up until this and, point. Yeah, and 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 just the fact that it and the the goo stuff, we're we need to explore that before we get excited about okay. it. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, Bree. Always a pleasure talking to you, and and uh, really excited that the new MakerBot's coming out. This Replicator yeah. Two looks great. You know, you've you've I think you've te have you tested every MakerBot? We've, we've built all of them. Yeah, or or so tested you, all cupcake. Of them. Thingamatic, Replicator. We got to get one of these little babies in your hand so you can give this the run through. Well, I almost bought one in the store yesterday. It was all I could <laughs> do to, to not just just swipe the card as on the way out. Do you know the story about how we got the first cupcake? You might uh, like this. Tell me, I don't know this story. So, I, I wanted a cupcake because I wanted to test test out a three D printer, right. and I couldn't get our money guys to say, yeah, spend fourteen hundred dollars on this thing. You're going to make one maybe twenty minute video with. So I said, well. Okay, there's this whole big database of 3D models on the internet that, that these guys have made called Thingiverse. What if I download one of those every week and we print a different thing every week and we time lapse and we make kind of a silly video out of it? 
So we those then you are get, awesome then you videos. Get Fifty videos <laughs> instead of just one. You're like, well, fifteen hundred dollars divided by fi yeah, okay, that works. We can do that. So that's how that was the dawn of the of the print the mystery object. You know, one of the things I love is when people get them either as a group or as a like that's so creative and like groups get them. People do like, I mean, we, there's this thing that just I just heard about that. So NASA is our biggest customer, mm -hmm. which is just like that's oh, awesome. Oh, oh. So um, what are they what are they using them for? It's so cool. So there's a room at NASA where it's filled with the really expensive 3D printers and you have to like swipe into it mm -hmm. and there's people operators who have to use the machines for you. And then outside of that room is a bank of MakerBots. <laughs> and anybody at NASA who wants to try something out can just use those. Oh, that's fantastic. So there's no like you just go go up, just go up jam and your SD card in and print. Yes. Oh, that's super fantastic. So that to me that's like okay, that's real innovation. That's really empowering innovation at like the you know rocket science level yeah. like that oh, that's awesome the future is so looks so cool well and and where do you think we are on the three like if, if you look at this and it's tempting to compare it to like the history of PCs or phones yep. or or you know whatever and and I mean or, or 2d printers exactly yeah. yeah um I mean where do you think we are on the scale of of you know from from Apple II or, or you know, Apple One to you know, modern iPhone, iPad, something like that. You know, I think there's a lot of people. There's a lot of real similarities to like this being an Apple II or a Mac moment, where we've made something that's for more people than the, than 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 like the homebrew computing than the, club. Than the kit people, yeah. Yeah, um, but I think there's a couple differences, and that's like we're living in this world of social media where people can actually do things and share them. So that I think that accelerates things, and then. We're also, it's a creative tool that you can share. So, I don't know. I think there's there's something about being able to make something like this, and you know. I mean, that's huge. Just, just and then to... and then be like, oh, you like this? You can just have this. I'll make more, right? Yeah. Like that kind of experience is really just. I don't think anybody's right. messed with consumerism and the, the sort of like economy of things in the same way that the users of MakerBots are going to transform the world of things. Well, and, and, the, and the shift from things that are all the same, I mean, when you're talking about a 3D printer, you, you literally shifted from a situation where uh, everything has to be the same and it's easy to make a million plas injection molded plastic things right. very cheaply. But with this, the cost of making a heart that has my initials on the front versus a heart that has your initials on the front is exactly the same. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or you know, completely different things that take the same time to print. I guess. Yep. The, yep. Yep. Yeah. So it, it's really exciting. We can't wait to see what's coming next, and and uh, really excited about the replicator. Well, Thank we'll, you so much we'll keep you posted. Always a pleasure. Good. Uh, we'll be back with more from Tested soon. I'm Will. Bye.